especially the Ethiopian and Eritrean compatriots who have courageously come together to launch the effort to restore sanity to the relationship between the two peoples. We are told in the Beatitude, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. I am truly heartened to see that similar efforts have been initiated by Eritreans as well. Eritreans, Eritrean Citizens for Peace held its founding conference in May 2010 in Brighton, England, where it drew a peace charter. And subsequently, in November 2010, it convened a gathering of several Eritreans, Ethiopians, and others from our region in Atlanta, Georgia, to broaden the scope of its work. I believe that these are inevitable initiatives by the people themselves in the face of the failure of political leaders. Let me come back to my topic, and please pay attention to it. My topic is unutterable words, and whenever I say this word, it's in quotation, shamed progenies. An, an, an honorable words, shamed progenies. I was born and raised in Addis Ababa of Eritrean parents. I came to the United States at the age of 18, way back in 1972. Therefore, you could say in the words of Professor, Professor Ali Masri that I'm a child of a triple heritage. Being an Eritrean by blood, by virtue of the locus of my birth, acculturation and socialization, an Ethiopian. And may I say, this is about as heretical as one could get. And finally, having lived, being educated, and worked in the United States my entire adult life. Triple heritage, there you have it a true triple heritage. Let me have you fast forward to May 1988, when I made a decision to take my Eritrean wife, with was Romita. And by the way, I'm an, I'm an Eritrean Orthodox, uh, Orthodox priest, and therefore I do have a wife. <laughs> <laughs> so I made a decision to take my Eritrean wife, with Romita, who has never been to Ethiopia. My two American-born children, Rahwa and Paulus, were what was billed as the family's ultimate summer of adventure. As the architect of the, the adventure, my plan was quite simple. I was going to introduce my children, my wife as well, to the first two important formative heritages <coughs> of their father. We were to spend the first half of the summer in Ethiopia. There, they would see the house in which I was born and raised, the schools I attended, the neighborhood small and uneven field where we played soccer, the church in which I grew up and where I was molded and where I became a deacon as a child. Yeah, Eritrean men do cry. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Trinity Cathedral, right in the heart of Addis. We were all excited to visit historic sites such as Laliban, Aksum, and Gonda. My children had always been told of their numerous uncles and aunts, dozens of cousins, literally dozens, but now they would be privy for the, for, for the first time in their lives to the unanswerable words and, in quotation, shamed progenies that have their beloved uncles, aunts and cousins are Eritreans and the other half are Ethiopians. Growing up, I had never said that un unutterable word or words, half brothers and half sisters, born of the same father, but of two mothers. 
one Eritrean and the other an Ethiopian. The siblings never referred to one another as quote unquote half brothers and half sisters. We were just brothers and sisters. We lived in close proximity. The fact that we were so many was, was a source of pride. And everyone around us knew we were quote unquote half brothers and half sisters. But the word among us was a taboo of the worst kind. Never refer to us ourselves as half brothers and half sisters. Just brothers and sisters, that's all. The summer plan also called for the family to spend the second half of the summer in Eritrea. We were to visit the ancestral villages on both sides of the families, mine and my wife's. This incidentally was supposed to be my first visit there. Consequently, I was both excited and pensive. The months of April and May were quite hectic as we made the necessary preparations. Gifts to be bought for so many relatives. All passports and visas were in order. And air tickets from the Ethiopian Airlines at hand. Everyone was quite excited. But all our plans were to be brought to a screeching halt. The most shocking and unbelievable news of war breaking out between Ethiopia and Eritrea in early May 1998 struck all of us like a thunderbolt. We were all stunned and could not make head or tails of the situation as the relationship between the two countries spiraled down to a tangled mess. All of a sudden, the people of both countries were being whipped into mass hysteria by their respective governments. My purpose here is not to discuss the mass slaughter of Eritreans and Ethiopians that ensued for the following two years. The deportations of each other's citizens in the tens of thousands and the resultant suffering. What I would like to draw your attention to is how the people's perceptions of each other drastically changed and the peoples of Ethiopia and Eritrea became <coughs> alienated from each other. As our family's plans for the summer were scrapped, I began confronting what I had long held to be my triple heritage. Should I still subscribe to the notion of my Ethiopian heritage? Or had it just been a mere mirage, a result of childhood nostalgia perhaps? Nothing more, nothing less. My dilemma was confounded by several occurrences that summer as I followed my own family situation in Ethiopia unraveled. My large <coughs> family in Ethiopia was being dislocated after having lived there for four generations. My quote unquote half siblings were all married to Ethiopians and identified themselves as Ethiopians were being denied new Ethiopian or that were being denied uh, new Ethiopian IDs and losing their jobs for having an Eritrean grandfather. Non-official political campaigns by various organizations and internet chat rooms in both countries have since remained stuck in their obsession in people's ethnic identity. Even today a cursory look at the propaganda of those who oppose their uh, respective regimes seem to show an ordinate obsession with who has how much of the other's blood. Those who are the products of Ethiopian and Eritrean, Eritrean patrimony, such as my own brothers and sisters, are looked at suspiciously in both countries. 
Are they Ethiopians or Eritreans? Even way when they, they themselves settle the issue, others would never let them forget that they are either second class Ethiopians in Ethiopia or second class Eritreans in Eritrea. And in this regard, even the leaders of Ethiopia and Eritrea had not been spared. Their politics is criticized that right below the surface it is the fact that unless has an Eritrean blood that seems to rile people. The same is true in Eritrea. Multitudes who share the same progeny are cast in similar suspicions for the countless Ethiopians and Eritreans. As for my own family, the relationship between Ethiopians and Eritreans are not some kind of abstractions. One half of the family is Eritrean and the other half is Ethiopian. We accept each other as such. We love each other no less and we cherish our progeny. I remember an event from when I was a child. One day my brother and I came running into the house must have been perhaps no 